Okay, so um, my name's Luke Dodd. I'm a visual effects supervisor from uh, Jellyfish Pictures. Um, last month, we delivered a BBC One show uh, called Planet Dinosaur. Uh, Jellyfish are really proud of this. We, we achieved an incredible amount in the studio, in a small studio, um, and I want to take you through why. Um, we, um, we completed 180 minutes of full CGI pretty much um, a feature film, uh, three hours including the motion graphics. Um, we achieved this task in under 18 months and um, we did this with about 50 artists. So incredible amount of work to get through. Um, we, on the comp side we used Nuke and Nuke became a big part of our pipeline. We had uh, 10 artists working for 11 months um, and, and they, they delivered 2,300 shots, which was a huge amount of work. Um, I'd just like to play a glimpse of what we've been up to. Okay, so let's first of all take you through uh, the passes. We, we wanted to keep the passes reasonably light because we had so many shots to do. So we, um, uh, it kept Nuke light and it also saved us on storage. We, um, we started first of all with a beauty pass uh, and then we go to uh, a depth pass which was um, used for uh, depth of field and to add pollen and atmosphere to the whole shot. We also had our ID passes where we could colour correct each um, constituent part of the shots. We had a shadow pass, an um, occlusion pass, but we also had um, a UV pass where we could add in extra dirt and uh, extra um, bits of blood to the, to the dinosaur's skin. Okay, so we'd start with the passes, um, the beauty pass, and then we'd build these up until we had um, a really nice looking shot. So, uh, in some, in some instances, we needed to add extra passes to the shots, but we did that on a per shot basis and requested extra specular, extra reflection, and so on. Um, we then um, take you to the environments and we had to build all of these environments from scratch and we used Nuke to generate this. Traditionally, a show like this would go out and uh, shoot backplates for us and then we'd take uh, those backplates and stitch the dinosaurs into. But now we designed and built 21 different habitats that worked for, uh, uh, for each sequence. Um, we did try and do a lot of this in 3D, but some of it we had to pick up in Nuke because the 3D environments became too heavy for uh, CGI and also the render times became too high. So um, these habitats were largely generated in, uh, in Nuke. So our environment started life as matte paintings and we wanted to give a real stylized feel to this show. So we used epic skies, long shadows, uh, to, to really moody the, the, the scene up. Um, we also have some desert scenes that we generated. Um, quite a lot of the dinosaurs roamed around in these pastures. We've got um, underwater and, and forest scenes. And these forest scenes had to be quite detailed and rich. So I'd like to show you a shot. So we, we break these um, map paintings down into constituent parts and um, we'd stick the skies on spheres, uh, mountains and hills on uh, simple geometry like cylinders, uh, and that gives us a horizon line. Then we could go on to middle distant assets. Uh, we could layer up cards and get uh, trees on there, shrubs, plants, rocks, 
um, and that gives us nice parallax for the shots and give us depth. Okay, and in essence, we had our back plate pretty much uh, where we could use to, to you know stitch in with the dinosaurs. So we'd start with our 3D pass, and then the guys would fill in the background uh, to compose the shot. Um, but we also dealt with some foreground elements in Nuke just to take the load off the 3D guys. Um, and we did this with, um, we went over to Kew Gardens to do a, a shoot. Uh, and we took lots of stills of prehistoric plants, all that sort of stuff, which was quite nice. And, um, and we, we popped them on cards in, in Nuke. And then we deformed these cards to, to give us a rough shape like a, like a typical leaf. And this is a cycad leaf, so we could manipulate this around, uh, we could take it and we could duplicate it, and we could end up with um, a plant. And we've got a really nice looking asset that we can use in 3D. We can cast shadows with it, we can relight it, we can, um, we can use it in the foreground, which is generally what we did with these. We, we pop them in the foreground, out of focus, and it gives the, the comp artist opportunity to frame his shot. And it also gives depth to the shot when the camera is tracking or moving. Um, and we, we also built quite a lot of these assets. You know, um, we, we ended up building trees, ferns, um, rocks, and so on, all in Nuke. And it, it did help to take the load off, off the guys. Um, next, we talk about, um, I'd like to talk about blood, which we, um, we added to the dinosaur skin to add a bit of gore to the, to the whole shot. And we, we did again this in, in 3D, uh, but it was uh, time consuming to do re-renders to get the timings right to work across shots. So we picked this up in, uh, in Nuke. So we, we started to add this blood. First of all, we got the, the texture map from um, 3D, which is the pelt, and um, we projected it through the, the UV pass. The pelt map was attached to the UV pass through the ST map, uh, and then we could interactively um, place mats. Okay, so we, we went out and we shot some ink running down a whiteboard and some milk running down a, uh, a blackboard, and it gave us a really clean, clean mat. And um, that we could then take that and place this interactively on the pelt map um, in UV space. And we could do this quickly, um, and the artists, all artists could do it, and we could lay it out across the shots quite fast. We, we can see here, we can retime the shot, we can position it, and we can make sure the blood travels further enough down the face uh, to make it feel like um, the dinosaur's um, bleeding. Okay. So once we're happy with our, our map, we can take that into our final comp and we can start to add colour, uh, we can displace this using this map, and we can, um, we can also add, highlight the specular and get that in to add wetness. And as you can see, it, it works quite nice and adds real detail to the, to the dinosaurs. So next, I'd like to talk to you through how we did some of the dust shots in, in Nuke. Again, we, we did some of these in 3D um, to, to generate these, cache them, big particle sims, and then retime them to work for footprints and, and so on. It became quite time consuming. So we again picked this up in Nuke and it worked really well for us. Um, as you can see there, we've got some nice shots um, using these, these dust, uh, this dust footage. The, the, we took dust elements a lot like we did with the blood um, mats and we got full as earth, dust charges, um, some really nice effects. We could then plug in the point to position pass and work out exactly in 3D space where the feet touch the floor. And we wanted to get a sense that the, the, the dinosaur was part of the environment and also the environment was reacting to, to, to the dinosaur. So we could take these live action um, bits of footage, we could place them on cards or geometry and we could really nicely and interactively place them in, in 3D space. We were also, out of the three hours that we delivered, we were doing three of that, one of those hours would be stereoscopic. So we wanted to stereo-proof the future of, of the programme, really. And this helped us to do that. 
it's accurate, versatile, and again, we could wrap these up into gizmos um, and spread them across the studio so everybody could use them and just simply retime them to work for their shots. Uh, this takes me to the end of the um, tutorial. Um, thanks again for having me, and um, it's been great. Cheers. <laughs>